My friend Peter Schiff recently went on Lewis Howe's The School of Greatness podcast. I love Peter, I love Lewis, but Peter was saying some wild stuff. Let's get into what Peter was saying. I'm gonna go ahead and just point by point tell you why he's wrong. The dollar is gonna take a huge hit, I think, in its purchasing power. In the next five years. Yeah, so people need to do something to protect themselves. So, so the, the Bitcoiners got that right. Of course the Bitcoiners got it right, because the Bitcoiners understand the economy. I'm glad that Peter and I both agree on one thing. Now, even though we agree on the problems, the gold bugs and the Bitcoiners, we all understand the undisciplined monetary and fiscal policy. We disagree on the solution. Let's keep going with Peter's comments. But buying Bitcoin isn't the answer to that problem, because there's no guarantee that the price of Bitcoin is going to go up with inflation inflation because it's not tied to anything else. Uh, it doesn't have any actual value and nobody actually needs it. Now, here's the whole thing about this, Peter. First of all, of course, nobody knows if anything is going to go up in value. Nothing is guaranteed. The price of Bitcoin going up is not guaranteed. The price of gold going up is not guaranteed. Neither are stocks or real estate. The future is not guaranteed. The idea that something is guaranteed would be absolutely idiotic. But I will tell you that although we don't know what's going to happen in the future, we do know what has happened in the past. Inflation is at the highest level in 40 years. We have 6.8% inflation on a CPI basis. It hasn't been this high in decades. And gold is down 4% over the last 12 months. Even though while we have high inflation, gold has failed as an inflation hedge. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is up 66% over the last 12 months. So if you're looking at it from just a mathematical standpoint, well, investors have chosen Bitcoin as the inflation hedge over gold. Bitcoin's up and gold is down, even though we have high levels of inflation. Now let's continue with Peter's other comments. See, the reason that gold is an inflation hedge is because people need gold. They're gonna buy the gold. People also need weed or oil or cotton, but you can't store millions of dollars worth of cotton in your house, but you can store millions of dollars worth of gold in a shoebox, and you can use that gold. You can exchange that gold for cotton or any other commodity you need. What? <laughs> We're talking about putting gold in shoeboxes? I don't want to store my inflation hedge in the shoebox. I actually don't even want to store it in my house. Why would I want to take that on and have to put it underneath my mattress or in a shoebox? I don't want to do that. That's actually a bad idea. Now, of course, the whole argument that you could exchange gold for cotton or wheat or any other commodity is true. You can do that, but you can also exchange Bitcoin for cotton or wheat or anything else. In fact, if you go to certain retailers, they actually accept Bitcoin, but they don't accept gold. So of course, as we know, Bitcoin has served as a better store of value with an environment of high inflation, but Bitcoin has also served as a better medium of exchange than gold as well. So I don't know what Peter's talking about here. Nobody wants to put their Bitcoin or their gold in shoeboxes. And of course, Bitcoin is the better medium of exchange. But let's continue. If money is losing value and then all commodity prices are rising, if you can barter one commodity for another, well, you know, that's how you can save your purchasing power. That's why gold, though, can be money because people can have gold even though they don't need it because they can use the gold and exchange that for the things they do need. Now, of course, Yes, you can absolutely see that all commodity prices are rising because the dollar is being devalued. Remember, the gold bugs and the Bitcoiners all agree the dollar is getting weaker. There is a devaluation of the currency. But Bitcoin, our favorite friend Bitcoin, continues to outperform all the other commodities. Bitcoin is up 66% over the last year, currently sits around $47,000 per Bitcoin. And so, of course, there are many commodities that someone could hold. You can change commodity for commodity. You can transact in them. But of course, the best one is Bitcoin. Bitcoin has outperformed in an environment of high inflation, and it is also the most popular one from a medium of exchange standpoint. I love my friend Peter. Lewis's podcast is amazing, but Peter got this one wrong, and that is exactly why.